In this little video, I'm going to be adjusting the idle current of the main amplifier stage in this receiver. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is not because I replaced transistors, but because I guess this is kind of an old unit. And the components, they tend to drift in value over time. So basically that's the reason why I'm doing that. I don't want the idle current to be too low because then at low power um, you might get some distortion which you might be able to hear. I probably couldn't and you don't want it like to be too high either because you don't want the amplifier running basically too hot. It'd be kind of like leaving a having a car in idle but having to revving it up really really high. You know while you're basically while you're uh, sitting the the um, basically the distortion at the low power level which is uh, called crossover or notch distortion it that basically um, well what I want to say is that low power levels this is when this kind of distortion shows itself basically you might think okay that doesn't make sense um, isn't it true that distortion increases like if you crank an amp all the way up it does but this 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 um, low power distortion that level or that time duration or whatever however you want to see it that stays the same. So I'm about ready to do the first channel here, and I'm taking here the readings across ten pin and pin number sixteen. I think pin number ten is here, number sixteen here is in the back. It's basically across one of the uh, power output emitter transistors. Um, I had to let the unit warm up first, first and uh, I got speakers in the off position. There's nothing hooked up to any of the jacks. Um, anything else? Mm, no, as far as I remember, um, that's, that's about it. I did take a look at the service manual for the next higher up stereo receiver which is the XX SX535 and this is a 525 and um, there they want you to adjust it for 15 millivolts which I think in this case might be a little bit too low um, because then I'm almost at one extreme of the pot here see right now it's showing 29 and if I go down, well, I can get it down to 6 millivolts. And if I go all the other way, I'm going up to 120. So I think what I'm going to do is get it like on 30. I'm just taking this arbitrarily here and leave it at that. Um, of course, when you turn this thing now a little bit, makes a, a real big difference and my recommendation is to um, actually hook up the leads before you do these measurements so you don't uh, blow anything out okay I can see that's moved again so because if I did it for 15 millivolts I think I would almost be at I would be at an extreme and um, extreme edge of that adjustment almost and I think and I know that the lower you go the higher the distortion at low power level so I think I'm going to basically leave it around here now do the other side go a tiny bit higher okay okay well I'm going to go a tiny bit lower, but for now I'm going to go ahead and leave this now and I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. Next. So I've got the hookup for the other channel and this time I'm going to be using pin 9 and 15. Um, and I got 36. Of course I had to Meanwhile, I had to shut the receiver off, and then I had to, got to wait 
once I turn it on for it to stable hook up make the hookups and then stabilize itself and same thing here you can go all the way up to a hundred and thirty and there okay I'm going to go up to Go to 30 right there. Um, as I said, I'm kind of doing this arbitrarily because there's nothing in the service manual whatsoever. And the next higher model, again, is they want you to adjust for 15 millivolts, which, in my opinion, for this, I would be almost at the end of the the uh, movement of the potentiometer. So that strikes me as kind of would be kind of too low for this um, so I'm going ahead and I'm going with the I'm going with the 30 I am gonna listen to it though and see if I can okay that's about the same as the other one it was around 30 30 point on I'll go with that and um, that should be about to uh, should about sum up this video so just to kind of uh, show what I'm talking about the lower the uh, idle current we got here the uh, higher the distortion I had to right now I'm feeding in a 20,000 signal it seems like the higher the frequency the basically the more it's noticeable um, easier to get a reading that's for sure so now here it is all the way turned down. You can see there the, the needles going up, needles going up, the distortion's increasing, and now I'm increasing the idle current going the other way. You can see right there, then it's going all the way down to that. So but I am gonna leave it to where it was since I've got no specifications around 30 uh, millivolts. I think that was point at 0.25 or 0.2 percent distortion and uh, right now I'm thinking I'm putting out like a, right over I think it's right over half a watt something like that so that is kind of seems to be pretty close to where I had it at so and here you can see at a thousand Hertz right now I'm reading I think I got right over a half watt output or something like that and um, I'm on the point one scale and I'm reading less than right under point zero five percent distortion I think um, now I'm going to go ahead and play around with the pot again you see it's a lot harder to uh, I gotta hold this steady so it's a lot harder to see anything at a thousand Hertz right I don't really see barely any movement or anything a little bit right there but um, the distortion shows up a lot seems like it's um, a lot more at the higher frequencies easier to see at least